Hey guys, it's Jamie from Kilbrook Farm and I thought we'd give you a May update on our victory garden. All right, so many of you guys have been asking about our victory garden, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How has it been doing? So I thought I'd give you guys a little update. Um, many of you guys know that we started our garden sometime around the end of February, beginning of March. We started um, having some neighbors come over to help us uh, clear this land. And this is an emergency food garden. This is not the ideal location or way that we would put in a food garden, but with the pandemic happening, uh, we thought that it would be a good idea to get some food started just in case there were some shortages for this summer and this fall coming up. We wanted to make sure that we were just, um, you know, being the ant and not the grasshopper here. Um, so what we ended up doing, because we don't have a tiller and we have such a large garden, um, I. I didn't want to have to hand hoe this entire garden, that would suck. So we ended up putting in landscape cloth um, that covers the whole entire garden and then we stamped in little holes for each of the plants. So I'm going to give you a tour, we're going to tell you how it's been going. All right, so the first thing is a string that is running around the outside of the garden. It's about two feet off the ground and about two feet in from our uh, four foot fence here. And somebody had recommended doing this because they said that it keeps out deer. We don't know if this works, but I had the extra string, so I thought I would throw it in here just in case. I also have pie pans and CDs and little pieces of foil that are flitting around the garden to keep away birds and to make some racket noise to keep away uh, any critters as well. This is very rudimentary. All right. So the first row that I have here is potatoes. We planted purple here, white potatoes down here. Um, for the first couple times, I've been shoveling the dirt from the sides on top of it, and now I started putting in some straw. I was able to find a couple bales of straw um, at our local uh, co-op. And so I've been tossing those on top of the potatoes. They seem to be coming up pretty nice. This row here is uncovered because I have a bunch of seeded items in here. Like I threw some carrots in here, some bunching onions. We got some lettuce. Marina planted some um, daikon radishes up here. Kohlrabi. Uh, I have some leftover onions down here and I have some garlic all the way down at the end. All right, these are our radishes. I have some French breakfast radishes planted here and they are ready to be picked. I like them small, they're less bitter this way. They just so happen to be all ready at once. So I just started planting a couple more. You'll see some patches of dirt in here. Mix uh, my seed in with some soil and sort of sprinkle it around and those will be ready in probably about another 20 days. This area here where you don't see much, just a couple little seedlings coming through is where I have my beets planted. Um, this is the most challenging part so far that we've had uh, because I planted seeds directly into these holes and uh, that's not what this landscape cloth is meant for. It's meant for transplants. It's not meant for planting seeds direct. And a lot of the seeds, when, it, when we get our uh, very heavy rains, um, the seeds would wash underneath the landscape cloth. So I had to replant these a couple times and even still, we only have a couple of them coming up. Um, but this is all an experiment just to see what works and what doesn't, so. Down here we have our Swiss chard and our romaine head lettuce. And down at the very end, we have some uh, red lettuce and this has been going pretty good we've been we've been eating off of this pretty heavily something else has been eating off of this pretty heavily <laughs> you can see some some bite marks in this one romaine leaf um, probably june bugs i think june bugs are out now and they've been i've been seeing some um, places where they've been getting at the plants pretty heavily um, i did put this shade cloth over top this is nothing more than a camo netting that i got for like a dollar at, at walmart um, and it was in the clearance section and I got a couple pieces of this and just threw this over here just to kind of shade the uh, lettuce because it will bolt once it gets above 80, 80 degrees and, and our temperatures here in the spring tend to get above 80. We've had a couple days where they were. So I want to try and keep this as long as possible. This is my onion row. Uh, I have candied onions planted up front and a Patterson planted in the back. Patterson is a long-term, a, a keeper onion, and these are a sweet onion. 
All right, so this row I have four cucumber plants, four zucchini plants, and down at the end I have for sweet meat. And now sweet meat is a, it's a squash variety that is very similar to sweet potato taste tastes a lot like sweet like sweet potato. Um, and so we decided to go with that instead of pumpkin this year because it is a keeper. Um, but if you haven't looked into sweet meat before, you should definitely look into it. It's kind of a gray pumpkin, but it's very close in tasting to a sweet potato. So it can work for sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie or anything like that. These are my lima beans. Uh, they've been doing really well. Again, like I said, I had something munching on them, on a couple of them, and I believe it was those June bugs. Um, I have since sprayed everything with BT, and I'm going to go over the different sprays that I use. But I did use BT on these, but they're they're doing really well. And I have two rows of tomatoes. Um, this is the first row. This these are all Roma tomatoes, which are really good for making sauce. And at the very end of each of these next four rows, I planted some German Johnsons, which are an indeterminate. And uh, those are really nice slicing tomatoes. All right, so this row here is my green beans, probably one of my favorite vegetables. Um, I have jade planted halfway, and then I have dragon tongue planted the other half. And my dragon tongue are coming up pretty well. The jade had to be replanted. Again, problems with the seeds that are just going underneath, um, going underneath the, uh, the landscape cloth. But you can see right here, something's been munching on my bean plants. That happens. All right, these are my cabbages. I have four red cabbages here, and then these are Jersey, early Jerseys, I believe, that I planted here. And then at the end, I have Swiss chard. And then right next to that, these are all of my peppers. And I planted a variety of peppers, uh, all sweet peppers except for four jalapeno. And I have banana peppers and orange and some sort of uh, red pepper as well. California bell, I believe, is what I have in there. Planted, planted all in here, and they're doing pretty well. Again, something has been eating a little bit of these. You can see some of the plants are a little bit munched on. Um, and then up front, I had two empty slots, so I put a couple of eggplants. All right, the last three rows. Again, I have some more beets planted in here and some herbs down there. This is the last of my broccoli, and I got a couple little mini heads out of it before it started bolting. And I got a couple side sprouts going on here right now. I might be able to get a couple more a couple more bites out of it before it's completely gone, but I'm already starting to replace it. And um, right here I have a couple okra plants, Swiss chard. These are my Brussels sprouts, more Swiss chard. Collard greens are doing beautifully. I might be having some collard wrap soon. And then these are all my kale plants, which again, we've been eating off of pretty heavily. Now along the fence, I planted a, a couple runner beans and they're coming up a little bit right along here and along the back of the fence and then I'm going to take you to the outside where I did some craziness. So I don't know if anybody else does this but if you run out of room in your garden I just stick things wherever I find some dirt. So I had some leftover cucumber I threw out here, some zucchini down here, <laughs> zucchini, zucchini, and then a whole row of sunflowers and beans just mixed together. And these are all coming up again. A couple things that are getting munched on. All along this side too, just some beans I threw in there. And these two are some leftover sweet meat that didn't fit in the garden, so I put them out here. And then over here I have two watermelon plants. And yes, this is like a dog cage. And this is a sweet meat. Extra sweet meat. I'm trying to grow my garden as organically as possible. A lot of people around here like to use seven dust uh, to keep the pests off their plants. I try to not use that. Um, 
I just noticed the plants getting eaten because I believe that the June bugs just started hatching about two days ago. So I just started using BT. I'm gonna take you up to the house. I'm gonna show you what that is. And uh, we're gonna see if it works over the summer. All right, so see, these are some of the organic pest controls and fungicides that I use on the plants. Probably the one that I use the most is this Thuricide, which is uh, a BT. And this tends to kill a lot of like, worms and moths and caterpillars and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I've been using this on the cabbage and the cabbage looks really well, but I just noticed, oh, like I said, over the last two days that my green beans were getting demolished. So I'm starting to spray this on everything. Um, this is for blight. It's a fungicide for blight for peppers and tomatoes. You can also use it on um, uh, the potatoes, cucumbers. Neem oil, and this is like a three-in-one. It's an insecticide, fungicide, and uh, miticide. I don't really like using this because it is harmful for bees, uh, at least until it completely dries, but I did have to use this on the kale plants especially the underside, that's where the aphids like to hide. Probably my most favorite thing to use is the organic Neptune Harvest. Um, and this is a seaweed fertilizer and it's a foliar spray. So you mix this with water and spritz this on uh, your, your plant leaves. You could also mix it into the water and um, just water your plants with it. It's a really good fertilizer, it's excellent. And then I use uh, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, and usually I mix this in with whatever I'm applying to the plants. I'll put like a tiny little drop of this in there and it helps it adhere to the plant leaves. I also have down here some DE in this bucket. And I don't really like using DE and the reason why is because it covers the leaves and I believe it prevents the absorption of sunlight. I I'm not a real big fan of it because of that. Um, so I don't really use that as much. And then the other thing that I use is a long-term fertilizer and it's actually just chicken poo. So a lot of people have asked me, how do I water the garden? And I think ideally when you're using landscape cloth, the, what, the way commercial growers do it would be to have soaker hoses or drip irrigation running down each of the rows. I don't have that kind of system and I do have to be very careful um, that I don't drain down our seep spring that we have. So I just fill up a bucket with water and I go around to each plant and water each plant and that's how I water the garden. I um, hope that's been helpful to you guys. Again, I'm not a master gardener. This is all an experiment for us and it's just, this is an emergency garden for us. This is not the ideal way that I would do a garden here. Um, up at the house that we are currently building, we're planning on clearing the southern ridge and I will be putting in raised beds and that would be the most ideal way for us in this particular area of growing a garden. And this is all just an experiment for us and, and we're doing it uh, in a way that we don't have to go rent a tiller or borrow a tiller from anyone and that I don't have to hand hoe an entire garden in 110 degree temperatures with 100% humidity. So maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but that's our update for May and I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.